All right, welcome to the first episode of AIP After Dark. I'm going to be doing a lot of these. Um, be, I think because I'm gonna be, this is like the only time I have available these days. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at, I've added some new things here. Uh, I've added some new entity extraction to our pipeline. And if, if you missed the first episode, I'll put a link to it in the description. But what we're doing is we're building a pipeline to parse um, SEC filings, including like 10Ks and 10Qs, starting with Palantir. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way to extracting the financial statement information, put that into a structured database, build semantic search on top of it. Uh, so really cool stuff. This is the second video. So hang around. Uh, so I added some entity extraction using an LLM. I also added some classification to classify uh, things into whether it's um, a table of contents, part of the financial statements, managing discussions, etc., management discussions. And then I also did statements classification. So if any financial statements appear on the page, I classify like what type of financial statements are on that page. And we're going to use that later to do some computer vision to actually extract the structured data. So that's the overview of the changes. Now let's dive into each change I did. All right, so for the first change, we're going to look at entity extraction. Uh, this is my prompt, but basically I'm telling it that I, I want the model to um, identify anything, any entities that can be categorized into these buckets here. And you'll see um, down below where I define those buckets. This is a really cool template that Palantir gives you for entity extraction. Uh, it defines a struct for you based on some parameters you enter and automatically builds the struct for you. And then you can set the type for that structure. And it could be, an, in this case, I want an array because I'm going to have this array of entities that are going to come out that are associated with one of these categories, right? And so um, there you go. And, uh, and I also you know, used a chain of thought example and then I uh, chain of thought prompt strategy, and I also gave the model some examples of things not to do. Uh, and I use this little phrase, uh, you know, do your job correctly or a puppy dies. This is actual prompt strategy. It tends to trigger safety layers in the public APIs, but because we're using private APIs, it doesn't really um, trigger it. And then down here, you have um, the ability to preview your prompt. So I added some test cases. I'm not going to run them right now because it's going to take forever, but you can run these and see the output um, that's generated and it gives you a good way to do a prompt engineering kind of feedback loop. So you'll run these, you'll see how your prompt does, make a change, run them again, and then see how things go. All right. And if you want to change your model configuration, you can do that by clicking this little button here and then you can, you can change the model uh, that's associated with this. Uh, and again, when I started, I tried mixture, uh, mixture of experts model. Uh, which is uh, right here, uh, the eight, uh, eight by seven billion, and it was terrible. So uh, GPT-4 is still uh, out of the list that I have the best. Uh, I would like to try Claude 3. Um, it's not in my stack, it's in other stacks. Uh, it seems to perform really, really well. So I'll probably be switching over to Claude 3 if I, if I get access to it. Uh, just a side note too, you can add descriptions in here and you can generate the descriptions and these will show up on the notes. That's where those uh, rollovers that had the descriptions I was showing you earlier. That's where you define these and just use the generate function. It's pretty easy. And then make sure to give your, your node a name. Uh, we're going to go back to the graph and we're going to jump into the next uh, step, which is classification. Uh, but before I do that, just remember also you can color code your nodes. Um, so you can select which color and then you can also add new colors here. Uh, and then you can filter by those uh, in the, um, uh, in the, what is these called again? Oh yeah, the legend. <laughs> so if you want to filter by node type, which makes your life a lot easier if you're trying to find things. All right, so let's take a look at classification. Uh, the classification prompt is a bit more involved. Um, it's still a chain of thought prompt. Um, and I basically am telling it, hey, look, your job is to classify uh, the things that are on, classify this page into one of the following categories, right? Table of contents, financial statements, management, discussion, disclosures, et cetera, right? And I, again, chain of thought, um, and then I give it an example, tell it what not to do. And then um, again, I'm using GPT-4. Then I want that outputted into a category column. We're gonna go ahead and run this now since there's only one to run. Hopefully it doesn't take forever. Um, sometimes it can take quite a long time for uh, these previews to come back. Also, when you build these things, like they will take a long time. Uh, when you're using LLMs. And you do need to be conscious when you're building workloads like this and selecting Pipeline Builder as your tool of choice, exactly how much data you have to process. Uh, and as you can see here, this is correct, by the way, financial statements is the correct category for my sample data I chose. Uh, uh, but back to my point, uh, if you have a lot of data you need to process, 
Um, say you have millions of rows, right? Like Pipeline Builder, to my knowledge, doesn't support batch processing with the uh, chat completions APIs, uh, with like say OpenAI's chat completion API. So you are going to have to use code to do that. So like be very conscious of that. I'm going to show you examples to um, when we build out this pipeline of using the AIP orchestration tools for um, your pipelines and transforms that leverage LLMs and code authoring because you can rate limit them, you can retry them. So like when you hit limits, when you're processing lots and lots of data, um, not only can you use the batch processing APIs, but you can rate limit, uh, deal with rate limiting and deal with retry mechanisms in code in a very clean way. But for Pipeline Builder, uh, try to just stick to, to things where you don't have millions of rows or tens of thousands of rows. Uh, probably best for things that like are under um, a thousand rows or something like that. Uh, but I'll, you know, I'll be exploring that topic a little bit more about the limits of Pipeline Builder when you're applying um, LLMs. So the last, uh, last thing we're gonna look at next is the statement uh, categories. All right, so statement categories, here we go. Uh, basically, I just wanted the LLM to tell me if there was a, um, if there were financial statements, uh, what type they were, right? So like, is, is there operating income? Uh, is it a general, like a consolidated income statement, a balance sheet, cash flow, uh, an equity statement, et cetera? And you could have more of these, like I'm just kind of in a hurry and I base it off what's in the Palantir documents. You, of course, you could add more of those. Um, and then basically I'm telling it, hey, look, it's an array because there might be multiple statements on the same page. Uh, you can output it as a string. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and, well, I got quite a few in here. We're not gonna preview them, but we are gonna look at the output and the output of data set I built uh, and you'll be able to see them there. So let's go back to the graph and, and all I did again was update my, um, my, my output table. And we're gonna go ahead and look at that output right now. Uh, so like here's my output data set. One of the cool things, this is um, there, if you wanted to see the PDF that gets outputted from here, you can uh, toggle this display media on. It is on by default and you can come in here and actually preview the document. So here's Palantir's 10Q. You can search the document, zoom in, all the great you know stuff you typically do. You can also download it here. Um, and all this is controllable by security settings, by the way. So like if you didn't want people to see this stuff, you could absolutely lock it down. So don't worry about that. Uh, so we're going to toggle that back off because I want to look at like what kind of output I got. So I'm just going to like select a column and uh, when you select a column, you can get the stats for the column and this looked like it did extremely well. Like I'm not seeing any phantom categories. If we go in here to, um, the category of what this is, I'm seeing all of the categories I defined. It looks pretty relevant to, it looks, it looks realistic, uh, in the distribution. So that's good, uh, for business entities. It's a little bit harder to preview, but, um, or sorry, for, for the entity extraction, let me see if I can get, ah, preview just so fickle in here. Uh, so you can see where I got some entities extracted here for metrics. Um, you can see that I got some, and is that the only one in that one? That may have been the only one in that one. Uh, let's see what's in this one. Got anything in there? Products, restricted stock units, and RSUs. That's cool. Um, I wanted to see if there was any that had like locations. What about this one? Can I get the first one to preview? No, maybe not. But anyway, uh, in any case, it looks like we did really, really well. Um, this is cool. It's got regulations populating for accounting standards. That's cool. Uh, populated stocks. That's cool. Finances. So that's this is this looks really, really good uh, so far. So I'm really, really happy with the results. Uh, next up, I'm going to show you code because that's how we're going to do all of the extraction of the financial data into structured tables, so we can view it all and then analyze it in Foundry. All right, so now we're gonna dive into code authoring. Um, in Foundry, you can create code repositories. Um, if we look at my, my sandbox here, I'll just take a step back to show you that. Um, if you wanted to, you can, I uh, believe I'm working in this folder here. Uh, no, that's not it. What folder am I working in again? Oh, I'm not in that one. Let's go back to the project that I'm actually working in. It's late people, give me a break. Uh, you can come in here to new uh, and then select um, code repository. And then under the code repository, uh, you can select what you're doing. So let's just say I'm building a transform pipeline. I'll select that and I can select my language. Um, I'll go ahead and do that and then I can select the location. And depending on what you're trying to do, you get different language options. But for um, Python transforms, you just, just select Python. You're off and running, uh, you initialize it. And you just like that, you got a, a new code repository. So we're going to step through this code now. Uh, I'm going to break down what we're doing and how this, this information is going to be used and why we need to use code cannot use Pipeline Builder. All right, 
So let's take this step by step. You're the OLM now. <laughs> uh, let's go through. The first thing that we're going to really do is just we're going to add this um, column content type. Well, first thing we're going to do is just um, get these media references. And this is a built in uh, API method that you call here that's on the media set. Um, the way you define inputs and outputs too, maybe if, you, if you're unfamiliar with Foundry, uh, there are decorators or just these helper functions that let you define output. And then here I'm using the media set input and that gives you, media sets have a whole bunch of built-in methods on there that are gonna make your life a lot easier. The first one is just this one that is going to um, grab the media references for you automatically. The next thing I'm doing is just creating a type class. That type class is what lets you display uh, inline references or these these media previews inside data sets. So if you don't add those, you won't, you won't actually see these previews in your output data sets. So we, we add that there so that we can do that. And I wrote a helper function that just processes these rows. Uh, credit to Palantir wrote, wrote most of this. Um, so thank you, Palantir. Uh, anyway, we, we go ahead and we um, iterate through each page. So like basically what we're doing is we're extract, we're getting the pages that are in this media set um, by calling this met method, then getting the document reference and grabbing the pages and then we get the note this is a number then we can use that in our for loop we use that um, iterator that that index to then uh, reference our page number so we can transform the document to a jpeg this will output the bytes and then we can use those bytes to create a base 64 encoded version of the image and that's what's going to actually be sent to OpenAI when we make a future request and you can't do this in pipeline builder yet like i'm not aware of a way to um, take the document pay the, the the page of the document and get the bytes out of it and then um, you can encode base 64 in pipeline builder but you cannot um, do this operation here we're going to read the bytes for the page so that's why we got to do this in code but now that i got the base 64 image where that's going to be useful for is for every page where i have a, a category where it's a financial statement and say it's one of the matching income cash flow etc I'm gonna, I'm gonna have the LLM do an extraction into structured data with computer vision. And the reason we wanna use computer vision is we're probably gonna get a higher hit rate than like traditional bag of words. LLMs kind of struggle when you have um, something structured like this and it's not, like the, the, the text is so mangled that it's really difficult to figure out like how is this stuff related. They're generally pretty good. Like you'd kind of be shocked at how good these models can be about just inferring relationships between the text that gets outputted. However, I do think we're gonna get better results than in my initial testing if we use computer vision to then extract the structured data. And so that's why we're going through this step of converting the image, getting the bytes for the image from the media set, then encoding those base 64. Now what we're gonna do once we, uh, I did build this data set and I did get um, output. And here you can see I'm creating the columns uh, that are gonna be outputted for my row. Uh, and then down here, I'm going to um, add another column, uh, and then I'm going to output the data set with this write operation. Um, so this is just saying, hey, go ahead and write this frame, and that's gonna allow me to specify my type class. Uh, you don't have to call write, you can just return your data frame in a, uh, when you're outputting only a single table, but I do need to make sure we include this type class. And so I'm just gonna call write uh, on that thing. And so here's my output. This table was outputted. We're just going to go ahead and uh, take a look at that real quick. There we go. Sorry about that. I don't uh, I don't know what happened, but my browser froze, so I just had to go relaunch this thing. Actually, I already have it open over here. Uh, so this is the output data set. Uh, it's got our um, base64 encoded image, which you can see here. Uh, probably looks like gobbledygook to you, uh, but that is a uh, serialized version of an image which we can send to our computer vision model now. And um, we're going to use that uh, to replace our input table in the pipeline we built. So everything up to here is what I just did in our code version of this. Um, and what I need to do is replace the input table because, again, I need that base64 encoded version of the image in order to send the request to the computer vision model. So I'm just gonna replace that. Um, this will be in the next video, by the way. I'm gonna replace that and then we'll rerun the pipeline. We'll get our output and then I'm gonna show you how we can extract structured data from any of the um, pages that we've identified uh, in, our, in our output data set 
where the category is a financial statement and um, this array is populated. And then what I can tell the model is this is a financial statement that contains one of the following uh, uh, statements, extract the data in a structured fashion. And I'll tell the model the structured format, I want that data extracted. And then we can use that to put it in ontology objects, which can then be visualized inside Foundry. So not only will you be able to do semantic search and run across all of the data to find things you're interested in, uh, you'll also be able to view all of the financial data extracted from the 10Q and we can visualize all of that as well. So stay tuned for that. That'll be um, the next episode. We're going to do the computer vision. And then the episode after that, we're going to power through and do the semantic search application layer. Uh, and I'll show you how to write functions on objects and TypeScript and how to um, work with the ontology APIs, the object set APIs to search over uh, the vectors. I'll even show you how to add a distance metric to your vectors uh, in Foundry so you can you can actually compare like um, you know, how closely, how closely do these um, vectors actually match. Um, so stay tuned. We've got a lot more coming your way, but I hope you enjoyed uh, AIP After Dark.